Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's Thursday, June the 20th, 2019. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, longtime subscribers here know my basic philosophy on betting. Right? I believe that when a champion goes up against a legitimate world class contender, right? I believe that the contender, if he's truly world class, if he belongs on the world stage, I believe the contender, just out the gate, has at least a 20% chance of winning the fight. In other words, if they fought 10 times, the contender would have at least a 20% chance of pulling the upset. Right? So, understand, the betting markets don't see it that way. In my opinion, and it's structural, betting markets tend to give the favorite too much respect. They overvalue the favorite. So you have fights like this fight, the super middleweight title fight between champion Caleb Plant and challenger Mike Lee, where Plant is going off as a 40 to 1 favorite. Right, folks, these are Mike Tyson esque numbers. They're telling you 40 to 1 that if these guys fought 41 times Caleb Plant would win 40 times and his opponent Mike Lee would win once on the Lee side of the ledger they're giving you 12 to 1 odds right the casino always takes a vig the 12 to 1 tells you if you believe the story and they're always competing stories if you believe the story on the Lee side of the odds they're telling you that if these two guys fought 13 times, Mike Lee would only win once. Right? Now, let me just say this. The million dollar question here, and I believe Caleb Plant is one of the best defensive fighters in the sport. Right? I picked Caleb Plant over Uzkadegay. If this were a fight where the odds didn't matter I believe Caleb Plant deserves to be the favorite right and likely will successfully defend his super middleweight title right I do believe that but understand the casino is actually compensating me for the risk in taking the underdog aren't they right this they didn't give me four to one odds. They're giving me 12 to one odds on Mike Lee. So let's ask the question Is Mike Lee legitimately a world class contender? Folks, the answer is yes. He's a ringer. Mike Lee, right now, is the. A lot of letters here. WBO's NABO light heavyweight champion. Right? Light heavyweight champion. This fight's at 168, not 175. I agree. There is a cause for concern when you have a fighter in his 30s, Lee's in his early 30s, losing weight, right? To drop one floor below him. Then when you look at the resume, you notice he hasn't fought at even 170 which is two pounds above 168 he hasn't fought at 170 since 2011 so there's risk Mike Lee is gonna have to go on a diet right that bothers me when guys in their 30s have to go on diets for fights right if you're 22 23 okay stop hitting the pub five nights a week Right, switch to diet soda for a few meals, and you might be able to drop the weight. 
right? You can go work out extra hard. You, you can handle a weight loss. When you're in your 30s, it's a little bit harder to do so. You don't want Mike Lee barely making weight, right? Sweating out as they calibrate the scale, sweating it out. And then you don't want Mike Lee showing up fight night thinking about a Big Mac and fries, right? A lot of these guys who lose weight, they're able to lose the weight. Then, of course, the fight starts and you notice they've also lost their stamina. So I will agree the weight loss is a bone of contention. But understand, Mike Lee is unbeaten. He has, he has a minor belt at light heavyweight. Let's look into his background a little bit more. One of the best boxing towns in the United States of America is Chicago. Right? Think Alphonse Fanfara. I'm just telling you, you go back through Chicago boxing and you understand this is a rough and tumble town. Now Mike Lee came up in that area. He fought as an amateur in Chicago, won a tournament. In other words, this guy's past has him in the deep water part of um, you know, boxing on the way up. Right? He was in a boxing town. Coming up, he was fighting hardcore Chicago fighters. You look at his professional career. Now understand if some non-boxer like me, some guy in his 50s, calls up, I'll name a big time trainer, Ronnie Shields, right? Let's say I call up Ronnie Shields and I say, hey Ronnie, I want to train with you. Ronnie's going to say, hey son, my day only has 24 hours. There's a long line out my door of young wannabe fighters, guys in their prime, not guys in their 50s, who want my services. The people who I actually work with are few and far between. They're the fighters who I view as prospects. They're the fighters who I view as talented. Right? Well, what I want people to realize is that Mike Lee trained with Ronnie Shields. Folks, that, that's a red flag right here. I thought this guy was a 12 to 1 underdog. You're telling me this underdog who the casino is giving really no shot of winning this fight. <laughs> no shot of winning this fight. A single digit percentage point of winning this fight, right? Under 10% chance of winning this fight. You're telling me that this guy trained with Ronnie Shields? Then, of course, I find out that his current trainer trains out of the wild card gym in Los Angeles. Freddie Roach's gym, right? Freddie Roach has some other guys there working there, right? You mean to tell me Mike Lee right now is hanging around the wild card gym? Could you imagine the level of sparring this guy's getting? You're at the wild card gym. You weigh, oh, I don't know, anywhere between 160 and 190, and you hear that a... WBO NABO light heavyweight champion who's unbeaten is in the building right chances are you're probably going to end up in the ring with him so the point I'm making here and I'll agree the weight loss big concern I'll also agree that Mike Lee has had some challenges right he had to take time off from the sport because of some injuries he had right he has an autoimmune disease that he has to monitor. Right? I'll, I'm not saying that this is cut and dry. You weren't expecting cut and dry on a 12 to 1 underdog, were you? But what I am saying here is that Caleb Plant, who's gifted defensively, isn't exactly a Mike Tyson early KO artist. Right? The fight's going to go a few rounds. Mike Lee is going to look at a guy, and I'm just telling you, this is the mindset. If you've been a light heavyweight for years, you're going to look across the ring. Mike Lee's shorter than Caleb Plant. Doesn't matter. He's going to look across the ring at Plant, and he's going to see 
a smaller looking guy than what he's accustomed to. There's a seven pound difference between the super middleweight division where this fight is and the light heavyweight division. And you know the way boxing really works. Guys only have to be light heavyweight at the weigh in. So Mike Lee's accustomed to hopping in the ring and fighting guys who no doubt weigh in the 180s. Right here, let's say Kelly Plant gained some weight and he's weighing in the 170s. I doubt Mike Lee's going to feel that Caleb Plant is too big for him. Right? Also, figure out who the players are. You know, some guys are in boxing to pick up a check. Right? We all have bills to pay. You're looking at the mortgage. You're looking at the private school education bill. You know, you want to stay in your neighborhood. You're looking at the food bill. You're in line at the gas station and you're thinking, man, I need to take care of my family. Right? Okay, hey, fair enough. But then you got guys like Mike Lee. Right? Mike Lee is a graduate of the University of Notre Dame, if I'm correct. Double check me on that. Right? This is a guy who, you know, very high GPA guy. You hear him in interviews and you say, wow, you know, this guy could easily be doing other things. You find out that the guy has come back from an autoimmune problem. <laughs> you find out the guy had a broken nose, had had broken hands at one point. And you say to yourself, gee, what you know, what is this guy still doing in the sport? I'm sure there are people around him saying, Mike, you're still doing the boxing thing? Yeah, he is. And he's fighting for the title right now. In fact, he has a minor title. So I see guys like Mike Lee, especially when the guy is training with Ronnie Shields. You can imagine the situation in Houston at that gym. You're at the Ronnie Shields gym. Imagine the people in the ring with him. Not only that, I, I hear about some dude from the Midwest. Then he's involved in gyms in Houston and gyms in L.A. That tells me this guy is serious. That tells me that this fight is the opportunity of a lifetime for him. Right now, Caleb Plant, defensive wizard, reminds me a lot, and I mean a lot, of Pernell Whitaker. Right? Of Floyd Mayweather. This guy is a pot shotter. Right? He you know, there are a lot of people who can dance. Practically no one dances like Fred Astaire. Right? In boxing, there are a lot of guys who have some defense, who look smooth in the ring. Very few look as smooth as Caleb Plant. I'm just telling you, a lot of boxing is presentation. This is a, this is almost like ice skating. You have three judges and they're going to decide who's won rounds. When you're fighting a Fred Astaire guy who just looks good doing it. In other words, you land 15 punches, he lands 15 punches, but he looks good landing his 15 punches. A lot of judges are going to be fooled by the smooth taste. To paraphrase a Colt 45 commercial, right? They say, don't let the smooth taste fool you. A lot of judges are going to be fooled by the smooth taste, especially when the guy who's smooth is the one wearing the belt. There's a bias, right? The challenger has to take the champion's title. So if the champ is the smooth guy looking good, he's likely to get the decision. Right? So I believe Mike Lee understands that his best shot at winning this fight is to bum rush. Caleb Plant. He has to smother it. Right? Now, I just named two fighters. I want you to revisit Pernell Whitaker against Felix Trinidad. Right? Trinidad knows he couldn't box with Pernell Whitaker. Right? Whitaker just looked too good, too smooth, too Fred Astaire. Right? You're, you weren't going to outbox Pernell. So, of course, Trinidad, bigger fighter, right? just keeps coming at Pernell Whitaker, smothers the angles, 
doesn't give Purnell enough room to look smooth. Make sure the fight is muddy. Make sure the fight is messy. Let's talk about Floyd Mayweather. Right? A fight many people think he lost. The Jose Luis Castillo fight, the first one. Right? Castillo is up on Mayweather, isn't he? He has Mayweather's back up against the ropes. He's hitting Mayweather with body shots. He's not giving Mayweather the opportunity to pivot, to move, and stuff like that. Even, even bangs up Mayweather's face. Mayweather's face looks puffy. That's Mike Lee's window of opportunity in this fight. He has to jump on Caleb Plant. Now, Mike Lee has fast hands. Mike Lee, I know he's going to make 168 at the weigh-in, but Mike Lee's the bigger guy, right? Might not be the taller guy, he's the thicker guy. Right? Mike Lee knows, I know Mike's KO percentage is not that high, but I have highlights from his career, and they're hard to find in my favorites folder right now. And you're going to notice that this guy is physical. He has to bring the physical to Caleb Plant. So the bet I'm recommending here, and this is the high risk part of the internet, right? Let's just call it as it is. We're taking chances here, right? It's not my intention to pick 40 to 1 favorites when the payout's going to be peanuts. I want to leave the casino with a profit, not a small interest rate return. The bet I'm recommending here is the underdog. Mike Lee. They're going to give me 12 to 1 in a sport where I think world-class contenders have at least a 20% chance of winning the fight. I'll be your huckleberry. The bet I like is Mike Lee at 12 to 1, hedged with the over. In other words, if Caleb Plant comes out, looks too smooth, <laughs> you know, is banking rounds, it's all good. I'll sit there and say, wow, Mike's being methodically outboxed. Right? The 12 to 1 underdog's losing. But of course, once they get to the over, I'm good. At that point, you know, more bear for me, even if Caleb Plant wins the fight. Understand, you have a lot to work with here in terms of hedging because you're getting a 12 to 1 endowment on the underdog simply to win. And of course, let's say lightning strikes. Let's say Mike Lee jumps out. Let's Caleb Plant know, hey, player, you're not fighting a super middleweight. You're fighting a light heavy tonight. Let's say Mike Lee drops Caleb Plant, because I believe in fights where you're the overwhelming underdog and you're fighting a smooth champion, you have to make a statement to the judges. That sleepy judge who's just checking the box for the champion, right? That sleepy judge, you need to let that judge know, hey, the title is at risk tonight. I believe Mike Lee needs to knock down Caleb Plant. Right? If Mike Lee gets the early stoppage, great, you're in the penthouse. 12 to 1, even if you hedged away four basis points, what do you care? Right? You're, you've, you've cleaned up. And, of course, if this is one of those fluky fights, Rick becomes a Rocky story. Mike Lee knocks down Caleb Plant. Um, you know, the crowd suddenly realizes that Mike Lee, unbeaten fighter, who already has an NABO, light heavyweight title, <laughs> right? who's already trained with Ronnie Shields and with a trainer out of the wild card gym in Los Angeles, right? That Mike Lee is actually serious. If this becomes a Rocky story and Mike Lee wins the decision, as unlikely as that is, then great. Keep in mind, the 12 to 1, you win if Mike Lee finds a way to win any which way or how. So I believe this is a casino mispricing. I believe Mike Lee is serious competition here. And this is someone who loves Caleb Plant. 
right? We're just playing the odds. It's an odds play. I like the underdog Mike Lee at 12 to 1, hedged with the over in the fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Understand, folks, this is a fight between two unbeaten fighters, right? Neither guy, neither guy has been stopped in their career. I think it's a mistake to view Mike Lee as some guy who got the check for the fight, says, oh, good, I'm paid in full. And now, of course, in the fight, gets hit with a couple of hard shots and then thinks to himself, oh, man, you know, I've already been paid. Um, my kids already seen me on TV. Where's a good place to lie down here in the ring? That's not this guy. Right? That's not this guy. He's here for the title. If the casino is going to give him a less than 10% chance of winning, hey, I'll take him. But I'm going to be prudent here and also take the over. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I know there is a big time Caleb Plant community out there. I understand many of you wanted to see Plant against the winner of Truax versus James DeGale. Right? Would have been a fascinating bout. Excuse me. Truax versus Peter Quillen. Would have been a fascinating bout. Right? And I know in terms of lists of the best in the sport pound for pound. Right? Plant gets overlooked. But yet, let's face it. His defense is much better. Isn't it? I mean, much better than, let's say, Golovkin's defense. Right, so he's a must-watch boxer. But at 40 to 1 odds, no. No thanks. Casino's making a mistake here. I'm with the underdog and the over. That's how I see it. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.